Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here with you this morning. Everybody just take a deep breath, right? And uh, relax um, as we come into God's house to hear his word. We can put all our worries and all our fears at the feet of Jesus this morning and find comfort and peace. Um, I just wanted to start the service today. The psalm, the appointed psalm for today is, is, uh, is uh, Psalm 70. And have you guys ever prayed the psalms? You know, it's, it's where you kind of go through and you read the psalms and, and it's, uh, you're actually praying them. And this, this, one, this one I want to start our service off today and we're going to pray uh, Psalm 70. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let them be turned back and brought to dishonor who delight in my hurt. Let them turn back because of their shame who say, aha, aha. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great, but I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. Amen. With that, let's rise together and sing our opening hymn.
Heavenly Father, we confess that we have ignored you and our neighbors in need. We have sinned in our thoughts, words, and actions. We have failed by our inactivity. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, O Lord, that we might be encouraged by your presence and forgiven of our sins. God hears your confession and has promised to always be with you. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son, Jesus Christ, to die and rise for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. We, we look, look for the return, return of Jesus. Jesus. You may be seated as we sing.
Good morning. Good morning. The Old Testament reading is from Amos 5. Amos 5, verses 18 to 24. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light, as if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him. Or went into the house and leaned his hand against the wall and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. To the melody of your harps, I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 and 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with them. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go get, go get rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we sing.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, the last few Sundays prior to Advent, focus on the last days, which culminate when our Lord comes to judge the living and the dead. And a common thread in our scripture readings as we draw closer to the last Sunday of the church year is who are those who will enter the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, and who are those who will not? In our gospel today, Jesus tells us a parable about a wedding feast. But the wedding feast of which Jesus speaks is not just a normal wedding party, but one of eternal proportions and consequences. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. You know, I've been a part of and participated in a lot of weddings over the years. However, only one of them was a groom. And I, and I want you to know that I was on time for the wedding. Um, but my wife wasn't. <laughs> so, from personal experience, there's some nervous anticipation as you await the, the one you love coming for that, that special moment, that special time, that wedding. And I think probably every wedding, without exception, those who participate in it, there's always that excitement, right? That anticipation and a little nervousness. So I probably should actually thank Erica for being uh, tardy. Uh, she was like 40 minutes late. Because it helps me to relate a little bit to the passage today and the anticipation of those 10 virgins as they, they await the arrival of the bridegroom who's running late himself, later than expected anyway, for the wedding feast. You know, these ten virgins in our parable are like, like bridesmaids. When Jesus spoke this parable, tradition was that a couple's parents would arrange their marriage. Then as the wedding drew nearer, part of the joy and, and anticipation of the festivities included the bridegroom coming to meet his bride. And it would be a surprise. He could come at any time during the day or even late into the night with a bride ready to go out and meet him no matter the hour in which he came. And the bridesmaids were there to keep her company and to help her to stay awake for the time of his arrival. And we see in this parable of the ten virgins that five of the bridesmaids were wise and prepared for the wait and the bridegroom's coming, while five were foolish and unprepared. You know, this parable is not just about any wedding, though, right? It's about the kingdom of heaven and the wedding feast of the Lamb. It's about the coming of our Lord and the importance of being prepared for his return. The coming that the wise were ready for, but the foolish were not. The wise had something that the foolish were lacking. What was it? Oil, right? Doesn't seem like much, does it? That was the only thing that the wise virgins had and what the foolish ones lacked. All ten of the bridesmaids needed lamps. All ten of them had them. And all ten of them had wicks in them. At the ready. But only the wise had the oil to burn. You know, there was nothing apart from this one thing in our parable that differentiated the women. They were all waiting for the bridegroom. They all belonged to the same community, the same group of friends. They all fell asleep waiting for the bridegroom to come. Even those who are deemed foolish claim to know the bridegroom, calling to him, Lord, Lord, open to us, at the end of the parable. The wise virgins were prepared and ready when the bridegroom came. The wise had ample oil to keep filling their lamps for whenever he might appear. Whereas the foolish bridesmaids were not prepared. They were not ready for the grand moment when the bridegroom came. They ran out of oil. So when the foolish virgins were off trying to find oil to fill their lamps, they missed the bridegroom. They failed to meet him, and when they finally made it to the reception hall, it was too late. 
The doors of the feast were shut, and they were not allowed to enter in. You know, it's not hard for us to, to see that these foolish girls are the unbelievers in the text. And the, and the foolish are those with a, a false faith or no true faith in Christ. The wise virgins are the true believers. They have something the world and even many who are part of various faith communities completely lack. Pages are spaced together. Just oil in their lamps. And the lamps of the foolish are filled with nothing that can light their way or direct their path through the darkness of a sinful, fallen world. They're not truly a part of the kingdom of heaven. The lamps of the foolish virgins are filled with anything and everything except Jesus Christ. If faith were an oil container, what does the world and sinful man fill it with? And what does the world place its faith? What does the world believe in and fear and love and trust above all things? And what is it that fills the lamps of faith of true believers, the wise virgins? You know, it's easy to differentiate the faith, the false faith of the world, those who are outside the church, the church's doors. The world's foolish people fill their faith with belief in other gods, themselves, hedonism, wealth, government, entertainment, sports, heroes, and various idols of their own devising. While some of them may even appear to be upright citizens, polite and kind, and even humanitarians, many others of the world's foolish people are openly hostile, vile, and evil, mocking God and persecuting those who truly believe in Him. They all, however, reject the call and the invitation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they do it outright. They have no desire to come to the feast, let alone to be a party to the party. Well, one could view the parable this way, as the world as a whole, with the foolish virgins being all the unbelievers, and the wise being all the believers, I think that the parable gets a little bit closer to home. The parable suggests that while these foolish bridesmaids are unbelievers, they are unbelievers who claim to have a relationship with they know about him, who he is. They even anticipate his coming, though not enough to prepare themselves for it. They would love to go to the eternal feast on the last day. They claim to know Jesus, but ultimately the time to prepare will come to an end, and with a mighty shout, and the bridegroom's coming for them and for many. On that last day, the door to the feast will be shut for all eternity. They will stand outside knocking, crying out, Lord, Lord. And the bridegroom will say the most chilling words of Holy Scripture. Truly I say to you, I do not know you. You know, those foolish virgins think they're, they're part of the kingdom. They've dressed up. They've come to church. They've been called and asked to become a part of the bridal party itself. They go through the motions. They did the showers. They got the dress, and they did outwardly all that which was required of them, with little, if anything, to differentiate them from anyone else in the group of ladies who are waiting the appearance of the bridegroom. To the foolish virgins, this is a, a call, not to wait until it's too late, but to keep your oil stopped. It is not enough to just know about the bridegroom, but to be known by him, filled with him, connected to him. Thus the call to be prepared, to be wise, to have oil in your lamps. That which makes them foolish is not their lamps. Their faith is not filled with Christ. They had all the outward appearances of being a bridesmaid, but inside they were just empty vessels fact that was made apparent when at midnight there was a cry. Here is the bridegroom. Come out and meet him. Meet him. Neither the wise nor the foolish were deserving of the call, but only the wise had the oil in their lamps 
to light their way, to go out and meet the bridegroom through the dark night and to enter the eternal feast with him. The vessels of faith of the wise virgins are filled with Christ. Thus filled, they are prepared. Christ fills your lamps through word and sacrament. It's so important to be in the word and to worship and to receive his good gifts and his grace. Your lamps are filled with Christ and his word which sustains your faith through life's trials and temptations and gives healing and forgiveness to you in your sinful life. Strengthening your faith to endure even the day of persecution. Your lamps are filled with Christ as you look daily to your baptism into him. Your lamps are filled with Christ at his table as you receive his body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. This parable is about the kingdom of heaven and being prepared. But most of all, this is a parable about that which prepares you for the bridegroom's coming. And it is the bridegroom who does this, who prepares you for the marriage feast on that last day as he fills your lamp of faith in himself, with himself, his life, his death, and his resurrection. Oil that prepares you and lights your path as you journey to meet him through the darkness of this world. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And in these last days, we believe that he will come to judge the living and the dead. For the faith field, as that day draws ever nearer, it is not a day of fear, but of rejoicing, of anticipation. For we are filled with Christ, made holy, forgiven, redeemed, prepared, just for that day. And we know right now we are his holy bride. Children of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, receiving even now a foretaste of the feast to come in this glorious meal. We can look forward with hope and anticipation for the coming of the bridegroom and the wedding feast to come because we have been prepared by the bridegroom himself, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Having heard God's word, let us rise together, confess our faith in the words of the nice and Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in, and in one, one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten God, Son of God, God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God, God of God, God light of light. Very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, you are our help and deliverer 
And to you we bring the prayers and petitions of your people, that you may grant to us all things good and needful, and guard us against all things evil and harmful. Pray that the Lord would rule over the darkness and shine his light over all the earth, that those from many nations may be united as one people through baptism and live together in faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord would grant us wisdom and courage, that we may be prepared at all times to receive him when he comes in his glory, that we may not be distracted by earthly glories that fade away or disillusioned by earthly disappointments, which will come to an end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord would give courage to all pastors as they preach and teach the word of the Lord, that all those who hear may believe, and that by believing they may live in righteousness and godliness before the world and be kept to the day when Christ returns as Lord and Judge of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the governments of the world and our leaders would act justly and with mercy, that we may be spared war and violence, that the final election results be honest and true and not the product of deceit or fraud. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord would give aid and comfort to the sick, the suffering, and those in their last days, that he may grant healing according to his will and strength to bear up under the weight of loneliness or affliction. We pray especially for Mark, Ron, Rachel, Aaron, Gary, Herb, Karen, Elaine, and all those that we name in our heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. That we may not grieve as those who have no hope, that we may rejoice in the promise of the resurrection to life everlasting, that we may encourage one another with these words. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. That we may find a home within the house of the Lord here on earth, that we may rejoice in the Lord's word and sacraments by which we are brought to faith and nurtured in this faith, and that we may be sustained in the days of waiting, serving the Lord in anticipation of his return. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord would prepare our hearts by his Spirit for this holy communion upon the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and that we may keep in holy hearts and live out in holy lives what we have received here upon holy lips. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may be ready to receive the Lord when he comes again in glory. That the Lord may open the hearts of those who have wandered away from the faith. And that the Lord may restore those caught up in the error's maze. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord may hear and answer the prayers of his people. And that we may be content with his answer. Trusting in his fatherly will and wisdom. To grant us all that we need and all that will profit our salvation. Let us pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hands. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those you have created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name of the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, 
To you alone, O oh Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Continue with our distribution.
may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the one true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please rise for our closing hymn.